Hey guys, this is Bri. Happiest of Mondays to you. I got so many things I could chat about. We could hang out like all day and just have so much fun. Uh, we will go through our quick one, two, three, as always. Start the day with this. Feeling good? Ready for the day? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty excellent. Sleep? This is was good. You know what? It wasn't too good at the Johnson house. Uh, Alexandra is, uh, has stopped breastfeeding our little daughter, Eleanor, which has lead to some inter- led to some interesting um, sleep things. Uh, a little less sleep than what I normally like to get, but all good. And all a reminder that none of this is perfect. We're never going to figure out the perfect systems that make everything just dialed in forever. I actually talked about that in a plus one today. It's dynamic equilibrium, dynamic balance. There's no such thing as static balance unless you're talking about six feet under at the end of your life. So we want to get good at walking the tightrope and adjusting with flexibility to what life throws at us. One of the things I've loved, so again, I, you know, every single day, boom, this is what's important. You can look at my little stack. I don't keep a journal anymore. I used to have a journal. I just keep loose leaf of papers, but I love seeing it grow. Just my stack growing. I've got the little number ones, little notes for my number ones. This is going to grow into a very, very big stack. I love seeing things aggregate and compound, but I'm committed to being the athlete, the philosopher, the soulmate, big three, energy, work, and love times two. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be prolific. I'm going to be connected. This is what I'm going to do today. Behavior wise, take it out of theory, put it into concrete practice. This is what I'm going to do uh, work-wise and what I'm going to do um, soulmate-wise. Now, one of the things that's been awesome, re-engaging with YouTube, and then I've, I've been paying attention to the comments lately just to kind of see what's up and what you guys like, etc. But it's been just unbelievably powerful for me to hear some reflections from our members. Um, I think you say your name, Andre. My apologies if I'm not pronouncing this right. Andre, one of our coaches from um, members, I think he's a coach in our program from Croatia, just sent this amazing note, you know, just thanking me for producing the backbone that has changed his life. He's been listening to the notes since 2014. We hang out on his runs and hikes and commutes. And just, you know, to read this, I literally got tears in my eyes this morning. Reading this note, and there's another amazing one from Jonathan. Jonathan, thank you for your um, thoughtful, kind note. You know, but then now sharing this with Alexander this morning, I literally nearly started crying. He said, you know, you motivated me to do this and this. You made me broaden my horizon as a medical doctor, become a better father and husband, um, putting my plans on paper, starting writing a diary, training harder. But most importantly, you made me want to become what you call a modern day hero to be the change I want to see in the world. Thank you. <laughs> Literally, I get emotional just saying that. And that's how we want to start our days. We want to fuel ourselves with a connection in our love work. We talk a lot about energy work and love. And we talk about how to bring your love to your life on a day-to-day-to-day basis, right? So one of the things we talk about is love 0.0 for yourself, 1.0 for your family, 2.0 for your community, and then love 8.0 for your work. And there's been some fascinating research that I talk about in a number of notes and plus ones, but we want to help our, our community, you, um, make the connection. You want to see the people whose lives you're affecting. And the science on this is cr- incredible. Even people that, that pick tomatoes, for example, if you make a connection with them between the work they're doing in the field and the people they're serving and their supply chain with other people who will take the next step and the people that will be consuming the produce that we're so blessed that they pick, they'll pick more tomatoes, like a crazy percentage more. Your productivity, your meaning, your flourishing, your sense of joy in what you do will go up radically when you make a connection. Now, everyone's going to have a different idiosyncratic expression of that, but make the connection. See the people you're serving, whether that's your kids, if you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, or your colleagues at work, even if you don't totally love your job, you have people that are awesome there. And then find ways to bring that love into what you do on a day-to-day basis. And you will increase your productivity, you'll increase your meaning, and you'll enjoy your life a heck of a lot more. Um, I think the note we talked about this was called Life's Great Question um, by Tom Rath, which is amazing. So anyway, there's that. And then there's just so many other fun things we can chat about. Very briefly, so again, I use this iPod because I don't want any inputs, right? So that's just, I, I do not want to be distracted before I do my deep work, which I only have Aura on this and Emerson uses it for um, listening to Audible books, but that's it, right? This does not challenge me to stay deep. And then I do things like I put these little black dots on my screen. So I don't want to know about Dropbox notifications while I'm working. I don't want to know about, I want to know about that thousand second timer. I'm 99 burpees in today. Um, I don't want to know about notifications and, and interruptions, etc. And then I wrote about um, Cal Newport today, and then I thought, oh, interesting. 
Cal Newport, so good they can't ignore you. Deep work, digital minimalism. His next book is called A World Without Email. And as of the last draft, I'm actually a case study in the book because I don't use email, right? And he talks about the systems we've built. So just very briefly, like this is my spreadsheet, our team spreadsheet that we use to create plus ones. So I come in here in the morning and I've got the title, I've got the subtitle and I've got the, the paper link, right? And we have just, I spend so much time thinking about systems, thinking about what is it that I and only I can do. And then I want to um, offload every single other thing I possibly can. And then our team takes the baton and just crushes it. Thank you, team. Um, <clears throat> Michael and Yana and Patrick and Kalman and Zach and Chani and Charlie and, and Seth and Ben, all the people behind the scenes allow me to do this. But this is one of the things we do. So you want to think about um, how you can systematize what you do. So you can show up in your daimon zone, in your genius zone as much as you possibly can. So there's that. And then this morning, I'm trying to get ahead so I can do the philosopher's notes we talked about yesterday. And I thought it might be fun to talk about <clears throat> how I go about kind of planning my weeks, right? So I know what I want to do. I've got my big goal. These are some of the plus ones I worked on this morning. Hanging out with Larry King. Um, I was on an interview with Larry King and the guy who started the Positive Psychology Master's Program at the University of Pennsylvania, which is awesome. So I'm working on that plus one. It's still rough. But basically, I like to lean into the, the four disciplines of execution, 4DX. You can check that out. I'll put a link um, link to um, the, the PNTV on that, the four disciplines of execution. Those guys tell us that you need to start with a wildly important goal. This is how I plan, right? Start with a, what they call a wig, a wildly important goal, like so important, your soul aches. You just need to achieve it. So for me, it's getting to a thousand philosopher's notes in 196 weeks and four days. Am I four days now? I forgot to, three days. Shoot, clock's ticking, right? Boom, and it drives everything in, in what we're doing, right? Now, that's a, we call that a wildly important target. Boom, this is what I'm going to do. Then they say, you need to know what your lead measure is. So if I want to achieve that big goal and all the outcome goals that come with that, what am I going to do? That's a lag goal. The outcome is a lag. The lead measure is what you're going to do in order to hit that. We call that a process goal, right? My process goal is unbelievably simple. It's deep work. So I strive to do seven hours of deep work during the week and then more on the weekends to hit 40 hours of deep work a week. Now, I'm not talking 40 hours of just whatever, shuffling papers and reading emails and responding to inputs. I'm talking deep focus, no inputs, deep work. That's a hard, hard goal to hit when you're committed to oscillating and you're also committed to shutting down complete by 6 p.m., spending time with your kids, et cetera, et cetera. But that's my target. Now, I know that if I hit this target, I'm going to hit that target. It, mathematically, it's just, that's just how it's going to work. I've done the hard work to figure out what my goal is and then what I need to do in order to get there. So while the important goal, what's yours, then what's your lead measure? What's the process goal that you're going to measure yourself on to a day-to-day -day basis? Those are the first two disciplines. And again, disciplines of execution. Then you need to have a scorecard. So my scorecard is my um, wall calendar, which sits on our little PEMF machine thing here, right? So, you know, I, last week I'm going through it and I tally up. Well, how many hours did I work? Here's my scorecard. Oh, I've hit it five. I've been working on Sundays um, a bit more and then I've got 6.75 and I got 6.85 hours. Seven's a hard standard. Six point something. Can't even read my own writing. 6.7 hours. Boom, five hours. And then I hit another four hours yesterday because that's the target I wanted to hit in order to hit 40. Boom, 40. My scorecard is clear. Then the fourth discipline of execution is consistency. You need to do it again and again and again. So then this is this morning. I started out with my compass and we're focusing on what's important to me. Then I focused on plus ones because I got to get ahead so I can go hit the studio on PNTVs. I wrote four plus ones this morning, right? Um, boom. And I'm celebrating each one of those. This is my burpees. I do, I realize this is so chicken scratchy, but... As I say in Journaling 101, which you can check out at optimize.me slash journaling, I do one sun salutation every morning, 10 pull-ups, 100 burpees, 1,000 meters of rowing, 10,000 steps, and 30 minutes on the trail. And then as I do those things, I put a smiley face. I go, yeah, that's like me. Every single time I got a little micro win, which we know scientifically is how you have great days. You celebrate, you make progress, and that's when you feel great. So I'm celebrating Every single little milestone I hit, boom, I've already put in two hours of deep work this morning. Awesome. Then I'm going to oscillate. 
and I'm going to spend time as a dad. I got an AM goal and I got a PM goal. Each time I hit one of these things, I'm celebrating it and I can hold myself accountable to my wildly important goals, energy, work, and love wise. And this is, again, a very quick look at how I do it um, very roughly. You need to find your own idiosyncratic style, but whatever it is for you, make it happen. Again, so much more we can chat about. I'll leave it at that. Let me see if I can get some concrete wisdom. What was good today? All right. So I worked on this idea. Be so energized and so awesome that they can feel you and adore you. This is the plus one I was working on. So Cal Newport's got this great book called So Good They Can't Ignore You, which is amazing, based on a Steve Martin quote, which became the second note I did today. So Steve Martin was once asked in a 2007 Charlie Rose interview, hey, what advice do you give for aspiring performers? And Steve Martin says, nobody ever takes note of my advice because it's not the answer they wanted to hear, Martin said. Again, Steve Martin, great comedian. What they want to hear is, here's how you get an agent. Here's how you write a script. But I always say, be so good, they can't ignore you. Think about that. Be so good, they can't ignore you. In response to Rose's trademark ambiguous grunt, Cal says, Martin defended his advice. If somebody's thinking, how can I really be, how can I be really good? People are going to come to you. Be so good they can't ignore you. Cal's book, he talks about the craftsman mindset versus the um, passion mindset. Check out the notes. I'll add a note to make a link to that as well. Note, link, so good. PNTV, check out the comment or the uh, whatever you call it, description. But anyway, today's plus one, I riffed on it and I said, okay, look, being so good they can't ignore you is the great standard for work. But what's our standard for energy? And I suggest that for energy, it's be so energized they can feel us. For our coaches, we talk again and again and again. You need to be a radiant exemplar. You are your number one asset. When you walk into a room, people need to feel that you're in integrity with your deepest values. Be so energized they can feel us, right? Then what do we do for love? It's not enough just to have our work dialed in or to have the six-pack energetic abs, right? What's our love standard? And I had fun coming up with this in our mastery series. Let's be so awesome, capital S. I print these out and then I'll edit them in a separate phase. I kind of batch everything. Let's be so awesome, they adore us. Imagine that, that's your standard for love. Being so awesome that the people in our lives adore us. Let's do that, as always, today. All right, have a great day. Appreciate you guys. See you.